Hello, everyone, and welcome to Sea View Quantum Network. I'm your presenter, Daniel, and I'm here with producer Claudia Pareco. Our opening song features Sunset Serenade by Cyclone. Albums and singles are available in all music stores and platforms. A Moment of Your Time is one of the most extraordinary gifts we could ever be given. Each week, we create a place for you to rest your heart by providing the platform for peaceable connection to the most gifted light workers, intuitives, alternative healers who will surprise you with something different, something outside of what's expected, innovative and unique. Our shows are held on Fridays at 12 p.m. Eastern U.S. time and 9 a.m. Pacific time. At any moment to participate on our shows, please call 805-830-8344 and press 1 to talk with the host. Take My Call. At any moment before or during the show, you can opt for Take My Call and jump the long line of callers. We are now following the pay-what-you-can business model. You pay what you feel our services are worth to you. You can send a payment using paypal.me slash p-u-r-e-c-o and add the amount that you want. To request a show, please write to Claudia Pareco at cview1111 at gmail.com or visit our website cview1111.net Now, close your eyes and get in touch with the present, the only reality. Feel your body, feel your breath, and let it drift back to the present moment. to see you 2023 and today we have best-selling and award-winning author and pet medium Rob Butra. Today the topic is messages from spirit cats. This is based on his 10th book recently published Pets in the Afterlife 4 Messages from Spirit Cats. If you have followed our show you have heard um, Rob Goodrow before, and we have had him here talking about dogs, talking about ghosts, where he travels. So he is very good in what he does. He is very well looked after as a pet medium and also as a ghost, tra- ghost tracking in Maryland. Rob is a scientist by trade and an author of 10 true paranormal books that have all attained best-selling status on Amazon. He's also a medium and a paranormal investigator with an Inspire Ghost Tracking Group. He uses his science background to explain the paranormal in terms of energy. He is a pet parent himself and has volunteered with animal rescues for many years. You can find uh, Rob in Facebook and Twitter, in LinkedIn, everywhere. Just uh, write his name, Rob Gutra, and he pops all over social media. You can um, buy his books, which we really um, recommend that you take, especially the ones that are more fear for us, the ones that he has dedicated for those tiny, beautiful beings that come into this life. To, um, I think they, one of the things they do is teach us what, what, is, what is really love and to love somebody without any measurement. So I am a dog person myself, but I do like cats. I never had one, but to me they are fascinating. And even if I ask my dog, Sky, she has this costume, a cat costume, Maya, and she is fascinated by Maya. Of course, Maya doesn't want to know anything about Sky, because she has this big personality that cats have 
So it's not when Sky wants, not when I want, is when Maya does. And so, Rob, thank you for being here. Thank you for bringing spirit cats into, into the world and to provide us this um, hour so we can learn a little bit more about the messages that we get from our cats, especially when they are in spirit or even alive, because they have a purpose like everything on earth. Welcome, Rob. Thank you for being here. Well, thank you for having me, Claudia. It's nice to be back again. Yeah, it is. So I I always have so much fun when you come here because it's, you know, you are one of those guys that touch into the mysteries of life, and and it is to me it is fascinating. It is fun. It is I don't know. It's something that never ends to surprise. Well, it's, it certainly is interesting to um, to communicate, especially with pets on the other side. I mean, they give us so much love on this side, and when they pass, we're totally devastated um, because we we raise them really like children. We we do the same things for human children as we do for pets. When you think about it, um, I, I like to point out when I when I give lectures that we we train our our kids. Um, how to interact well with each other. Um, we tr- we potty train them. We take them to the doctor when they're sick. We take them to obedience school or school um, to to learn. In the case of dogs, you know, cats don't go to obedience school, but mm-hmm. um, <laughs> but we do the same things that we we do for human children, and and that's why we have such a uh, a, a strong emotional connection to them. And when they pass, um, you know, at, as we as we grow older, when we raise human children, we certainly expect them to outlive us and go on and and be successful and so forth. But in terms of dogs and cats, they always remain like a three to five year old child. And when they pass, that's why it's so difficult for us to get through it. Yeah, you're right. Um, when when we had our our previous dog passed away. She was 17. Lisa, you read, uh, you gave us a beautiful reading about her, and it was so much comfort. But you're right. When she passed, I never knew what grief was before she passed. It, it is mm-hmm. a pain that you can physically feel. It is uh, to me. It was I, I was floored. I knew it was going to hurt. But I just never imagined it was going to be so bad. Yes, it, it really. So I, I've had four dogs pass, um, and and I'm a dog dad of three dogs right now. Um, and every single one of them, when whenever they pass, it leaves you like an emptiness within, um, and it's it it also makes a, a number of people including myself, feel guilty. Like, was there something else we could have done? Um, but but our pets know that that we are trying our best to help them comfort them in their, their senior years or their sicknesses and, and take care of them. And they can feel that emotion. Pets are very sensitive, as you know, as a, as a dog mom, that, you know, they, they know when we're happy, they know when we're sad, they know when we're angry at them. Um, they know when we're not feeling well, and then they surround them, they surround us. Uh, so, so they also can sense the anxiety whenever they're sick and, and they're in their last days. That we have to make that choice sometimes to help them cross over, and they usually acknowledge from spirit um, that they know we're stressed, and they're grateful that we have the strength enough to help them cross over. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, Rob, we are going. To, we have listeners and we have callers that might want to ask a question today. So, mm-hmm. can you guide our listeners or people that are in the chat room? Uh, so, what type of questions can you answer during this show? Because if you want a personal question about your cat, specific, you need to write 
and to draw because he needs to see a picture of your pet and he needs to put you in his calendar which is really busy but if you are such an affordable pet medium so how can they reach you for that and also in this show what types of questions can they do okay um, well, I do do pet readings. They're all done by email, and um, I am booked actually a year in advance. Uh, I and they can go to my website robguttrow.com or petspirits.com. That's easier probably, uh, and the instructions are are there on how to get one. Uh, in my email readings, they take about thirty to forty five minutes to type up because I and I need I do need the, a picture of the pet. I do need their name. Um, and I always I ask for a couple of other things like the names of the people in the house, uh, because sometimes if there are children involved, the children want to be recognized um, by the pet that has passed. And it's just like a person. If you don't ask a direct question to the pet or the person on the other side, you won't get a direct answer and they won't necessarily address everybody in the household. <laughs> so um, that's what I like to tell people. So as for uh, questions on the show today, if anybody has questions about, uh, about uh, uh, helping your, your pet cross, what happens after they pass, um, these are all things that I cover in my books, but I'd be happy to answer any of those questions. Um, if, you, um, if you have a specific question about your particular animal, that's the kind of thing that I have to address in a, in a private reading. So in that matter, um, Rob, we have um, someone that is asking, she says, well, I had a cat, her name was Mimi, and I only want to know, how do we know if your pet, when they cross over, they are healthy and they are okay when they were very sick before they pass? Okay, that's a really good question. So what happens, what happens after we, we pass is that the energy that's within us combines with our memories, our personality, and the knowledge that we gained in this life. And that, that becomes an entity of energy. And with, in terms of pets, 99% of them cross over and they become spirit. That, that's the other side. Less than 1% may stay earthbound as a ghost, but it's very unusual. In order to uh, – well, let me, let me address the health question first. Once we become a spirit and we leave our physical bodies, all of those ailments are also left behind. We don't feel those as a spirit um, because we're energy with, with our, our memories. So um, that is no longer any, uh, any concern. Um, the easiest way to know if your pet is okay on the other side is to ask them to come into dreams because dreams are the dreams uh, happen when our, our logical minds are asleep. When we're awake, our logical minds may see a sign from your cat and you may just discount it. For instance, you may see a quick moving shadow in the house where your cat used to like to hang out. And it's, it could very likely be your cat quickly visiting. They usually appear as quick-moving shadows. Also, you may see a, a photograph or a video or an in-person cat that looks like your cat. When that happens, your cat likely led you to see that at that moment, at that time, on that day, so that you would know that they're around. So dreams are the easiest way, but there are many other ways that I explain about uh, how to recognize signs in, in the Pets in the Afterlife War book. And Rob, I remember uh, talking about signs. I remember that when we were talking about pets, dogs, sorry, we were talking about things that they would do in, uh, to let you know that they were there. And yes. like, Dogs usually, if, at least in my experience, they are always there to show you their love. They're, they want to be right next to you, their company. Cats are a little bit more particular than dogs. 
So my question to you is, do they come as frequently? Do they come different from dogs? Would they be more specific to their personality? How? What have you seen? Yeah, there there is a difference um, in some ways that uh, cats communicate from the other side than dogs do. So um, when we when we talked before about dogs, dogs have a number of different ways that that they've let people know audibly that they're there, like shaking a collar or um, uh, often snoring or yawning or and cats are a lot more quiet that way. Um, dogs also convey uh, their presence sometimes by walking across the floor. So at nighttime, you may hear a dog walk across the nails on the floor. But cats are much more um, quiet. So some of the most common ways that cats will let us know they're around is they may walk at the edge of our bed at night. Many, many pet parents I've spoken to have reported that they felt like little cat feet um, were making indentations on the, the end of their bed. Sometimes a cat will curl up next to somebody in different places uh, on, their, on their bed when they're sleeping. Um, I did one reading for um, a person with their cat, and the cat told me that they like to curl up on near their pillow at the top of their head, the top of the person's head, and play with their hair <laughs> at night. And the, the pet mom wrote me back and she said, that's exactly what my cat used to do. And I do, sometimes I do feel like I have to brush my hair at night and I'm wondering what, you know, why that is. And it's, it's actually her cat in spirit. Um, so cats will, will behave the same way in the afterlife that they did in the physical. So just be aware of their favorite spots, their favorite habits, and those things can be repeated from the other side. And Rob, so one of the things that you were talking about also is um, this: when you need to let go of your of, of your pet. Mm -hmm. um, that happened to me. Like like when Brisa was, I thought she was ready, and I was ready too. And it's more, it's like an understanding that the dog gives you of that is that his or she is ready to pass. How is a cat? How does the cat communicate you since they are they are different or are they similar in that knowing that that you get that is their time or do they let you know by going outside of the car, of the house under the bed is there a uh, some signs that they let you know that they're ready? Yeah, it's it's quite similar to the way the dogs let us know that it's their time. So um, I have found that when a pet starts to isolate themselves and they're usually more sociable, that's one of the signs that they may be ready to go. Um, our, uh, before, in 2020, our 16 and a half year old dachshund, Franklin, who used to be very sociable, um, when he was at the end of his time, it, he wouldn't spend time with us in the same room. Even when I would pick him up and bring him in the room, he would find the strength enough, even though his his uh, back legs were failing, to get up and go walk into another room and just lay down. So that told us right there that it was time when they start interacting with us. Also, of course, when they stop eating, um, when they're not interested in things, if you know, if your cat likes to play with any toys, um, if catnip for instance, is no longer um, an attraction to them. Um, those are also signs that when they start losing interest in the environment around them and start isolating themselves, those are pretty much uh, signs that they're ready to pass. Thank you. So we're going to bring Denise. Let's see her questions. And remember, this is a general question and uh, not specific. Denise? Um, well, I appreciate it. I My cat died a few months ago, and I didn't really realize what was going on with her. And 
I, but I knew she wasn't well, and due to finances, I didn't real get her to the vet to find out, and she had a hard time at the end. So I guess I feel guilty, but I just wonder if she holds it against me. I guess that's silly to ask, <laughs> but I know that, that I mean that in a general way. Well, hi, Denise. Thank, thanks for calling in. So uh, I, I'm sorry about the loss of your cat. Um, I will tell you that when when a cat is at that point in their life where their health is failing that much, it likely would not have done uh, any good um, or, or by prolonging it, uh, your cat's life very long, especially because they passed soon after. So one thing that our our cats know is that we love them very much and they know that we take care of them. That said, especially when they get on the other side, they always acknowledge a thank you to their pet parent and they don't ever want us to feel guilty for not doing one thing or the other. So just know that all they feel for you is love. And they don't ever want us to feel guilty, whether it's about taking them to the vet or or bringing to, bringing them to the the point where we have to make the decision to help them cross over. They don't want us to feel guilty about that because it it just means that they know that they know that we love them very much. Thank you. Well, that, thank you. Welcome. That helped. And thank you, Denise, for asking the question. And Rob, um, how do cats understand the afterlife? What is it? Have they told you what is? What do they think about it? Oh, that's a good question. Well, um, all they can show me is who's with them sometimes on the other side. And, and I've had cats uh, provide me with names because they can, you know, they they hear something and they can repeat it to me uh, telepathically. So uh, they can also describe what people look like on the other side, and they can also describe other animals on the other side. So I've had quite a number of readings where that has happened. Um, they, the other, once somebody passes, whether it's a cat or a dog or a person, um, we really don't have a conception of what the other side looks like because really they're all, it, they're all energy. I have heard some mediums try to describe the other side as peaceful settings with sunshine and, and grass and so forth, but those are really um, images to help convey peace, peacefulness. So it doesn't really look that way on the other side. It's to me, it's just it's all energy and it's peace and love. But when a, when a pet shows you where they are, they usually show you that they are around the people that they love or other pets or things like that, right? Yes, they will. They will sometimes show me the uh, the people or pets that they are around. Um, but it's always in the ba it's always in the background of uh, a bright light. So there's really no background. <laughs> it's just the people yeah. that that are there and the, or the pets. Ah, so they are always around in the light, and you never know what is around. Right. We um, we don't really know what the background looks like, but but we do. We should take comfort in knowing that our loved ones are usually there to uh, to receive our pets on the other side. Um, so if you're worried about that, if you're worried about whether or not your cat or your dog um, is alone or confused on the other side, don't worry about that because our loved ones in spirit are always there to greet them. And it's Claudia, it's just like people. When when people are in the end stage of their life, they often report uh, report seeing uh, a loved one who's passed away, and sometimes they uh, they are talking to people that really aren't there. That, that have passed away. Um, that's very common. So your pets are, are with people on the other side, for sure. And, and I remember, Rob, that usually when you have a reading uh, with a dog, 
They usually refer of their favorite toy or their favorite meal or going here or there with their family. So when you write a letter, you know it is them. How specific are cats like that? Are they more to the point like, okay, I'm good, bye? Or are they more <laughs> detailed? Like, so what is it for the, in that matter? So, so they do. Sometimes they do uh, share a favorite object or a favorite food or a favorite memory with me. Um, and, and the reason they do that, though, is to uh, to let their pet parent know that that it truly is them. Um, often, too, that whenever I do a, a reading and connect to a cat or a dog, they will share with me some of the pain or discomfort that they it, it, um, experienced before they passed. Um, so I, cats have shared different issues like uh, heart problems and, and tumors and uh, kidney failure and so forth. Uh, but that's only because they want to confirm their identity. Um, and by the way, one thing I wanted to, to talk about for just a minute is <clears throat> uh, the, the experience of grief. And our society doesn't really validate loss and grief <clears throat> the way that that it does with a human loved one. Um, in my in my book, Pets in the Afterlife Four, I have a specific chapter, chapter three. It's a professional's advice about coping with grief, and um, it's it was written by my good friend Christian Young. Uh, Kristen Young, who is a clinical social worker in the state of Massachusetts. And she points out that because society doesn't validate our grief when we lose a pet, um, we aren't given time off of work. There isn't a way to say goodbye. Our friends and family members really don't acknowledge the passing of a pet, um, you know, like they do with a person. <clears throat> it, sometimes with people, they will send flowers or they'll they'll bring over food or something like that. But that doesn't happen with a pet. But it, what's important to know here, though, is that our grief is very important to us. And um, we need to do things to, to tell people that we're grieving, like posting a picture of your cat or dog on social media and, and expressing uh, your feelings of loss. And, and looking for that comfort from your friends and your family, because you need to let them know that this is a, this is a very big loss for you. Um, even, even though it's not a human child, it is, in fact, a child um, <clears throat> in terms of a pet. Yeah, so dealing with grief and it is something that that um, yeah, when you have gone through an experience of losing a pet, you understand what grief means. And what about when you have cats and some other cat in the family dies? Do they go through grief as well? Yes, that's a very good question. So, yes, if you have a companion pet, whether it's a dog or a cat, <clears throat> uh, that pet will experience the same kind of grief and the same kind of loss that we experience as people. So you may find that your your other cats um, or dog <clears throat> will not be as engaging, will be less active and um, more quiet. And that's a sign that they're that they're great. And it, it also means that they need some more attention, just like people. Um, when we are uh, feeling um, low, we want somebody to acknowledge it. But um, it's, it's important to know that your, your pets absolutely grieve the same way that people do. And what are those things that you can do to help your pet um, the pet that is grieving for some other pet? Well, really spend more time with them. Um, try to uh, try to be more engaged with them. Uh, a lot more, <clears throat> a lot more cuddling, because pets are very very tactile. So, um, you know, 
even if even if they don't like it, they um, normally if if they don't like to engage in being cuddled, for instance, you may find that they do when they're grieving. So uh, just try to be more engaging uh, of your pet after one of their companions pass. Brock, have you had a case where one of the cats in the family die and then the one that is left behind starts acting like the one that just passed and do the behaviors that the other one was doing? Yes, absolutely. And uh, some people have written me and, and have expressed that, and they've wondered if their if their current cat was possessed by the spirit of their other cat. And the and the answer is no. What what's going on here is that when your cat passes, and they're in a, as a spirit, they will come back and visit, and they will train your your other existing cat, or if you adopt another cat, they will they will train your new cat one or two habits that they did when they were alive. And the reason they do that is to let the pet parent know that they're still very much here. So um, if, you, if you adopt a new cat and they show signs, um, signs and habits that your other cat had that passed, it doesn't mean that your cat had reincarnated. It just means that your cat that passed is here training your new kitten to, to do some of the things that they used to do. Brock, another question is sometimes when um, there is this belief that when you lose somebody, and we're talking about a person, that at the beginning, while that person fully crosses over, and I don't know really what that means, but truly crosses over into the light, you can sense or feel that person more. But then after a certain period, you stop communicating with that person because he mm -hmm. has, and now he's no longer close to you. And I, I don't know how that works, but do you see that the communication with a pet is stronger right after they die, and then it loses the strength, or is that a myth? Yes. Absolutely. And the reason that um, our pets try to communicate much more when they first pass is because they want to let us know that they're okay on the other side. Um, until we get that message, until we acknowledge the fact that they are okay, <clears throat> whether it be in a dream or whether it be a visual sighting or, or feeling a coolness against uh, our feet or um, a kind of slight pressure against our legs or feeling them walk across the bed or something like that. Until we feel that and acknowledge that they are okay, they'll keep trying. Once we understand that they're okay and we accept their passing, then the messages come more sporadically. And usually, just like with people, they come on birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. So anniversaries could be like the anniversary of your cat's passing or the anniversary of their adoption. Um, those are the days to look for signs. Now, it could be your birthday or the cat's birthday or the birthday of someone in your house. And the reason why even pets understand these is because during those special occasions, our emotional energy level is elevated. And because cats can read emotions, you know, like we talked about earlier, they're, they know when you're happy, they know when you're sad. So when you're happy... A cat wants to be around you and, and wants to share in that energy. So those are the times to pay attention, birthdays, anniversaries, and holidays. Yeah, I, I remember that you had mentioned something like they like to be around you, like when you're going having Christmas because the whole family is there. But uh, – what if you are totally too distracted with all of those things and you miss the opportunity? Um, do they know that you are that distracted person that you sh they shouldn't even bother to come on those days? Because I'm imagining myself in Christmas and here comes Brisa to visit me and I'm cooking, doing all of those and I might not even think about, okay, let's pay attention. So... So she yeah, knows what, 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 can, what happens 
that's a really good point. Well, it, just because we're distracted and we're we're um, obsessed with whatever we're doing during the holidays, it doesn't mean they're not going to try. So it, it could be something as subtle as um, hearing your cat's name mentioned by somebody, um, whether it's a complete stranger on television will say the same name as your cat, or uh, you may see a, an image of a cat that resembles yours. Um, those things may jar you out of your um, <laughs> out of your busyness and make you think about them. But even if you don't see uh, signs from them around those times, it doesn't mean they're not trying. It just means that we're preoccupied. <laughs> I, I was just imagining myself totally losing it and losing the opportunity to or missing the her her. Signals and I'm like, oh, poor Brisa, she must be so <laughs> frustrated with me. <laughs> no, they won't get frustrated. They'll just they'll just keep trying. Um, but I I can I can tell you about one of the one of the chapters in my book, um, the Pets in the Afterlife Four. Um, a cat used a, a certain number and helped manipulate um, something in nature, an animal in nature, a bird specifically, to <clears throat> to help. Uh, his dad know uh, know that that he's very much around. Um, so when I did a when I did a reading from this cat named Fritzy, um, the the cat told me a number of things. And one thing that uh, Fritzy came through with is that a small bird would be li- was lingering around um, his dad's house, and the bird. Um, especially in the last week before I was doing the reading. And Fritzy said that the bird was being influenced by Fritzy to get, to get his dad's attention. <clears throat> well, his dad wrote me back and said, there, there is a bird that he's, he- he's been hearing lately that nested right under his window. <laughs> and the bird has been singing and uh, chirping very loudly, especially within the last week. So timing, uh, between the timing and the, and the sign that Fritzy had told me, Mike took comfort in understanding that that, that was a sign for Fritzy. Um, Fritzy also shared with me a special number. And these are the kinds of things that I get in readings. Now, you may not think that cats know what numbers are, but <laughs> they get help from humans and spirit on the other side to share these messages. So in this particular case, Claudia, um, Fritzy kept telling me about the number of uh, 1113. So when I told Mike about that, he the first thing he thought of, obviously influenced by Fritzy, was to look at photos on his phone. And he looked at a photo dated 1113, And it was a picture that had a really special meaning. Um, The picture of the, uh, the picture was Fritzy was standing, um, standing behind some leaves. You could barely see Fritzy, but he's standing, standing behind some leaves and almost totally obscured, but you could see his eyes (laughs) behind the, the giant plants. So Mike immediately wrote me back and he said, this is, crazy because this is how I think of Fritzy seeing me from the other side. And that's exactly Mm -hmm. what the message was. Yeah, you know, I love when when you read that, when you have those messages, I love how it is for the person. Like, I love when that happens because then you know it's true for you because there's no way that someone can make it up. And and I love when that confirmation comes. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing um, that it's usually one particular very personal thing in a reading that will um, that will mean the world to the pet parent. Uh, and and the um, so the reason I write these books, the Pets in the Afterlife series of books, is to number one teach. Uh, everybody teach the reader how uh, how your pets communicate from the other side. What signs to look for so they don't need a medium. All they need to know is 
different ways that they can communicate. Um, the second thing is is to help them work through their grief and their and their loss, um, and to understand that our pets love us from the other side and that they will always be connected to us from spirit. And they'll be waiting for us on the other side as well, because many times people have written me with concerns. They've heard crazy stories that pets don't go to the same place that people do and crazy stories that pets don't have souls, which is absolutely ridiculous. And, um, and they need, they need to understand how it all works. So, I've been fortunate enough to communicate with animals and spirit to get these kinds of answers that will help bring us comfort. Yeah, and you know, when you read your books, they are so personable and, and if they are a guide in and it gives you so much comfort and understanding. And anyone that reads them can get exactly what they're looking for. And again, for the book, if I want to get your book, where's the best place to find? Well, all my books are available on Amazon. Um, they are in paperback and ebook, Kindle. Um, and because I'm a self published guy, uh, they're all uh, under $10. So I, I set my own, my own price because I want people to read them. I, I want people to get the comfort and the understanding and then share share that that knowledge with other pet parents so that they also would not be um, have, be grieving so deeply for their their pets and understand what happens after they pass. Thank you, Rob, for that. And Denise has another comment. Then let's listen to Denise. Okay, thank you so much. Um, well, I'm sorry to be so serious here, but... Uh, I was wondering when the animal is in a lot of pain, what do they experience? I guess they, you know, like with health or whatever, what do they actually experience? Well, thank you for your call. Um, pets will convey the feelings to me as a, as a medium, some of the pain that they, that they experience. So, um, if the pain is too much, they will certainly let you know by um, by either uh, retreating or uh, or uh, crying out. Crying out. Um, but you're, it, the best one to, to trust, though, for to understand whether or not your pet is in uh, deep pain is your veterinarian. But I mean, after they like this cat has already passed, but mm -hmm. do they think of pain? the same way a human does or experience it the same way? Uh, so the answer to that is no. They don't experience pain anymore as a spirit. That's just the physical feeling in their physical bodies. So as as a spirit, they're all energy, and you, you can basically think of them as 100% healthy. Okay, so but if... But I have a comment about that, Rob. Some people... Some people believe, and, and I don't know if you have had any confirmation about that, that sometimes your pet uh, experience um, sickness or pain in to help the, their human and um, uh, release some of that. Is, do you see that as true? And, and I think what she's think, feeling is that when we feel pain, we mm -hmm. feel pain in terms of okay, this is not in my life. I am not going. I can't do, deal with this anymore. And pets deal with pain very different from us. Have you uh, have they told you something like when they are sick, do they really think oh I'm sick, I'm gonna go stay in bed because I can't do this, or do they just don't don't see it that way? So. Sometimes when pets are, are uh, ill, when they're when they're quite ill, they will keep it from their pet parent. And the reason they do that is they don't want us to worry. Um, and, and sometimes they don't understand what's happening with within them themselves. So they, when they do experience strong pain, that's when they really do let us know. Um, is there a, a follow-up part to that question? 
The other thing, do they take on your your illnesses? No, they really don't take on our illnesses, but they offer us comfort all the time. So that's their role. Their role is really a caregiver. It's not really more uh, of an empath. It's more of a caregiver. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, it, it is fascinating, Rob, how, because they are such small little beings and how much they fill out our lives and our, our daily lives, how much presence they have in our lives. So when they part from this world, it is really, really a big, a big hole in there. So when you have a, the experience of one of your pets or maybe the only pet to pet, many times the the person that is experiencing this thinks, I will never, ever, ever have a pet again. And in another case is, Having a second pet or someone else's is really helpful. What is your take on that? Should you, should you not? Should you wait a period of time? Or do they come and let you know when you should have a new one? That's that's a really good question. A lot of people ask me the same question. And it really, number one, it's up to the individual when you feel comfortable. But number two, um, our pets will often lead us to the next pet they would like us to adopt. Um, and they may do that by, if, for instance, if you're on Facebook and an animal shelter pops up near you, an, an ad, um, something like that, uh, something random. Um, that's a sign from your pet that it's okay to adopt. Um, they don't want us to grieve for an extended period of time. They they do often like us to adopt a pet in you know in their in their honor. They know that we have a lot of love to give, and that by by adopting another pet, we'll be able to focus that love on the new pet and not wallow so much in the grief and the loss of the pet that passed. So uh, some pets I have done readings for though, Claudia, have, have been kind of funny in their <laughs> their recommendations. Um, there was one cat that I, I did a reading for that said that he wanted to be the only male cat in the house. So he said, mm-hmm. it's okay to adopt a female cat, but never adopt another male cat. Yeah, and you know, Brisa was like that when she told, uh, there was this pet medium as well that, that read her, and she said, okay, you can, it's time for you to have another dog, but mm-hmm. you will not get one like me. It, she has to be totally different. And and I was like, no way. I, I didn't believe the, the psychic, of course. I said, no, I want one exactly like Teresa. And I tried until mm-hmm. I got Sky. Sky can it's very different. She is black. Teresa was white. They are different breeds, different everything. But Sky felt yeah. When I found her, I just could not not have her. And I well, I did do what Teresa wanted. So it's different. But she was adamant that it, it was it had to be different. Yeah, it's it's funny what they they can from the other side. Yeah, it is funny that they have such an opinion on that. Yeah, so they show their personal they show their personalities from the other side all the time. So uh, they, whatever they did in this life, they're going to do from the other side. And and that was my other question: is like they do not lose their personalities, and so. For example, what when, what kind of personality traits have you found that the pets uh, continue with when they pass? Oh well, they they pretty much keep all of the same personality traits. So if they if they were kind of stubborn, they would be stubborn from the other side. If they were quiet, they would they would still be quiet. Um, I, I find too that when I when I do readings for people who have multiple pets in spirit. The ones that are mostly um, more sociable will come to the front <laughs> and and they'll start communicating while the other ones will stay in the background and in, in, in shadow. 
Um, it's the same thing with people. Uh, so they keep they do keep their personalities. And I, I liken that to my own parents because both my parents have passed. And when when they were alive, my mother was very animated and she'd do all the talking and my dad would stay quiet and kind of in the background. And then when my dad passed first, he was very communicative to me. Hmm. After my mom passed, my dad doesn't do any talking anymore. My, he lets my mother do all the talking and he stands in the background. <laughs> and that's what happens with pets too. And, and what do you do when you want to speak with the one that is behind? That, that, that you, you want to, like the owner wants to know that one that is all the way in the back. How do you get them to shut up so you can listen to the other one? <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that, that can be tricky actually. Um, but usually it's when I call them by name that um, that they will communicate. And that's why it's so important for me to know their name and uh, a picture of what they look like because when I'm doing these readings, I can see different different animals in my head at the same time and I have to pick out the one that the pet parent wants me to address. And do you see them in color? Or are they shadows? Are they just light, just the, the outline? Or what? how is it that you see them? That, oh, that's a really good question. Um, so sometimes I see them in color. Well, mostly I see them in color. Um, and I can see the patterns on them and so forth. Um, there was one cat that um, that came through and kept showing me rings around his tail. And th the photograph that the pet parent sent me was only a picture of their face. So I had no idea what the rest of the cat looked like. <laughs> so, but so the cat kept telling me that he liked to sway his ringed tail back and forth. Um, and, and sure enough, the pet parent wrote back and said, yes, he actually did have rings around his tail, which is kind of unusual. Um, uh, so I do see them in color, but one of the funny things being being a guy who happens to be colorblind is that uh, sometimes it's hard for me to discern what color they are. <laughs> so um, I do my best. And have you seen cats that are a uh, ghost? Yes, I have. I have seen, I've encountered two cats that are uh, earthbound ghosts. Um, as a matter of fact, there's a chapter in my book about one cat that I met in Ellicott City, Maryland, that has been haunting a uh, a hair salon for many years. So the um, the hair salon contacted me to go in and uh, do kind of an investigation to see what I could find. And um, in in the book, you you can see sketches a sketch of the cat that I made and and where the cat lingered and. Um, there's also uh, an account by the woman that manages this lawn that that says that a lot of people who come in there uh, report seeing a cat under their chair or in a different part of the salon, and they don't have a living cat. So that cat's pretty active there. And one of the reasons that you go there is to help them cross over or not? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, so in the, in the case of this particular cat, uh, he was very elusive. So as soon as I saw the cat, he, he ran, he darted away. Um, it, it's harder, it's harder to cross ghost cats over, um, because they tend to be a little more skittish than the dogs on the other side. Um, I have crossed the dog over, and I did that by opening uh, like a portal to the other side, you know, white light, and throwing mm -hmm. a treat through the th throwing a treat in the direction of that <laughs> portal, and the dog, the ghost dog, ran and after. They can't the help it, poor dogs. Yeah, they can't help it. <laughs> it's all those. <absolutely. laughs> and and Rob, I can kind of understand when you are a ghost and you are airbound that maybe you are too attached to the house or to your treasures yeah. or something why would a 
pet remain or a dog or a pet remain into a place? What is it that is so enchanting for them? So I've only encountered, I think, three or four ghost pets. Um, and what they've told me is that they love the place that they lived. And mm -hmm. when they passed away, they, for some reason, they decided to stay behind because they wanted to be still close to their pet parent. They thought if they went, they, they went into the light, they wouldn't come back. But honestly, if they went into the light, they could come back anytime, anywhere. Um, instead, they decided to stay behind. Um, so, so for instance, this this ghost cat in El Ellicott City, Maryland, likely stayed behind for that very reason. And when the pet parents passed away, the cat remained behind, which is kind of sad to me. Mm -hmm. um, but the cat wouldn't let me get close enough, fast enough to cross <laughs> to cross mm -hmm. him over. Um, so maybe the cat still looking for the owner. Or waiting so, for the owner, maybe? Yeah, very much so, uh, waiting for the owner. And I, I think now the cat has, um, the cat ghost has found a different uh, thing in life, and that is to greet a lot of the people that come in that salon. <laughs> I guess that's kind of fun for the cat to have. Yeah, they found a different way to uh, to enjoy their life. The other side. Wow. So, what is it the most fun about being a pet medium, Rob? The most fun. Well, um, I guess I get to meet thousands of dogs and cats from the other side, and and um, experience their various personalities. Um, I've experienced very affectionate uh, pets. And uh, very kind of independent pets, if you will. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. They and they and they they have quirky personalities. Um, everyone has their own likes and dislikes, but I think that's I think that's it really. Uh, the most rewarding part about being um, a medium and working with pets is that I bring healing and help and help bring some closure to the people who lost their pets. And that's why I do what I do. And that is for sure. Why we bring you back here again and again, Rob, is because that part of your mission is priceless. Thank you so much. Thank you. So again, if you want to contact Rob, please go to robcutro.com, R-O-B as in Brian, G as in Gabriel, U. Yes, in summers are oh thank you everybody for being here. Enjoy your weekend. Rob, welcome back again and let us know when you're coming back. Thank Thanks. you.